Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we'll be looking at the state of Nevada. This will be the final edition of my state by state series. We've talked about all these other uh, white states um, so far. And for the time being, when I'm done with this video, this will be the last time we do a state by state analysis video. But of course, as we get closer to 2024, as we approach the November election, I will do some less competitive states, states that are still in play, but not really in the toss-up range, states like Texas, Michigan, maybe Florida. But for the time being, Nevada will be our last um, deep dive state, at least for now. So let's talk about it. Um, in 2020, Nevada voted for Joe Biden by 2.4%. He won it by a little over 33,000 votes. And it wasn't super close, but it, obviously a 2.4% margin is still respectably close for Donald Trump. And again, you have to remember the important thing about Nevada is that Democrats did well there in 2020, but not as well as they should have done. Because if you look at 2016, it was the exact same result. Hillary Clinton won Nevada by the exact same amount as Joe Biden did, and Biden did better nationwide. So that means that relative to the national environment, Nevada was actually more Republican in 2020 than it was in 2016. And that's a little concerning for Democrats. And I, I, I think most Democrats were, expected, were expecting to win Nevada by more walking into election day. But nevertheless, they did have a decent showing there in the midterms. Catherine Cortez Mosto obviously won her Senate race, which is the most, uh, arguably the most important Senate race in the country, at least last year, and Democrats held on to it. Now, they did lose the governorship. Joe Lombardo beat out Steve Sisolak, the Democratic incumbent. Wasn't too shocking, but was certainly a kind of a uh, key defeat, I guess, for Democrats. But regardless, Lombardo obviously is a far less... Um, hurtful Republican victory from the perspective of the Democrats than a Laxalt victory would have been. Laxalt winning would have given Republicans an extra Senate seat, and um, obviously he's much more conservative than Lombardo, who will is essentially a kind of a handicapped governor because the legislature in the state is so Democratic. But that being said, um, obviously Nevada mixed results, but I would say Democrats got the better uh, bargain, I guess, here. So it's, it's, it's kind of been a white whale for Republicans. They haven't really been able to break through. They had a really good chance last year, but they came painfully short. So I would say that walking to 2024, it can be hard for Republicans to be optimistic about Trump's chances, especially, obviously, he's you know been indicted for the third time. He's having problems. But for the sake of this video, we'll be assuming that he's able to run, that he's not in prison, that he's, um, regardless of how he gets charged, just getting on the campaign trail of running a competitive campaign. So... Um, to talk about Nevada, I, th I think it's important to kind of focus mostly in Clark County. I know that other counties are important, like Washoe County, which swung towards Joe Biden by a good amount in 2020. It's where Reno is. It does cast a good amount of votes, but it's, it's still a county that I'd say isn't particularly, um, like, Biden losing it would obviously be pretty bad, but there's not too many votes he can net out of it, so I would definitely argue that it doesn't matter as much as Clark does. And again, to put it in perspective, 8 out of 10 Nevadans live in Clark County. It's where Las Vegas is. It's where it's all its suburbs are. It's a really huge county. And in 2020, as we saw, Joe Biden netted 91K. So he did fine, but he did worse than Hillary Clinton, who actually, I don't know if she netted as much because turnout was up in 2020, but she won by more. And that's concerning for Democrats. Joe Biden did really poorly with Hispanic voters across the country. Nevada was no exception, obviously. It was better than Florida or South Texas, but it was still a problem. Biden lost ground in the city of Las Vegas itself, and its suburbs were actually not that good for him. You know, you look at other uh, uh, suburban counties or precincts across the country. Phoenix, five-point swing to the left. That's the county Phoenix is in. All these Atlanta burbs, they're all super left-trending. Charlotte, pretty big swings towards Democrats. D.C. area, Northern Virginia, super big swings towards Democrats. You go to swing states. Southern Pennsylvania, that's where uh, if we go to Chester County, that's directly outside of Pittsburgh. That's Delaware. That's Chester. Big swings towards Democrats. Go to Michigan. Oakland County, Livingston County, they all swung towards Joe Biden. So Arizona is kind of the one swing state where the big token suburb didn't really help Democrats that much. And you can't really tell by the county because Clark County is such a big county geographically. But if you look at the precincts that are outside of Las Vegas, they were not that good for Joe Biden, even if they were in the suburbs. So um, that's that's a problem for him. It's, it's one he can definitely fix. But I think there's actually kind of an underrated chance here for Trump to take Nevada. And obviously he did well in uh, Las Vegas in 2020, but he can improve. Uh, Las Vegas is kind of the perfect storm for a candidate like Trump because obviously it has a lot of uh, diversity. Um, Democrats have been doing well here historically, but Trump did well with Hispanics in 2020. Maybe he continues that in 2024. Um, black voters obviously were pretty stagnant in 2020. Maybe Trump can improve marginally with black voters in 2024. I don't know. 
But the big saving grace for Republicans in Las Vegas is that it's mostly working class voters in the city itself. Obviously, Clark County has a lot of wealthy voters in the suburbs. That's a whole different ballpark. The city of Las Vegas, there are a lot of um, service workers like, you know, wait, waiters, waitresses, people who work at casinos, people who work middle class blue collar jobs. And obviously, these voters have historically been Democratic. But in 2020, they're big for Bernie Sanders in the primary. They never were really too fond of Joe Biden. And in the presidential election the following November, we saw that. So if Trump can continue his gains with working class voters and Hispanic voters, that's an improvement that he can make in the city of Las Vegas. Now for the suburbs, that's a little trickier. Um, the suburbs of Las Vegas are weird. They're growing really quickly, which is, I'd say, beneficial to Democrats. But again, you have to remember that in Nevada, trends are strange. In 2020, like I said, every other sub- almost every other suburb in a competitive state trended towards Democrats, not in Nevada. Um, like I mentioned, I've I feel like a broken record, but the precincts outside of Las Vegas were not that favorable to Joe Biden. So maybe it's a Las Vegas localized thing, but the suburbs are just not moving in either direction. They were pretty stagnant, and I think that hurts Democrats. So Clark County, 80% of Nevadans live there. And if it swings another two points towards Trump, if it swings maybe one and a half, two points towards Trump, that's almost his entire statewide margin. He's down to maybe like losing by 0.7 or 0.8% uh, statewide. So then from there, he does have to make it up in these other areas. And again, I think there are counties in the uh, kind of rural area of the state, like Nye County, um, Mineral County, uh, you know, not really these northern counties, but these counties in the south, I'd say Lincoln, Nye, uh, Esmeralda, and then over here, this is Mineral, and I believe this is Leon County. Um, unfortunately, I I don't know too much about these counties individually, but they are pretty, they have pretty substantial Hispanic populations, and even Elko County up here. Um, which is actually pretty big. It's kind of the biggest rural county in the state, obviously very Republican. But um, a lot of these counties in the rural part of the state have Hispanic voters that have been trending Republican for a while. That's a couple thousand votes Trump can net. And then finally, I talked about Washoe County, how it might not be important for Biden. It's important for Trump. Uh, Biden, if he wins Nevada, he can just do it by holding onto his ground in Clark County or maybe doing marginally better in the rural areas. Trump has to do better in Clark with the rural areas and then Washoe. That's kind of what the tipping point could be. Um, in 2020, Biden did pretty well here. But there are areas I think Trump can improve. I, I'd say the first demographic where Trump can improve is potentially young voters. We, we've seen that um, in recent polls, Biden's pretty unpopular with the uh, young voters in general. Reno is kind of a university town. You have a lot of young population moving in from other states. And so I would definitely say that um, Trump is not a great candidate for young voters. He never really has been. He wasn't good in 2016, wasn't good in 2020 either. But Biden's not a good Democrat for young voters. He's very unpopular with them, and a lot of them, I think, are going to come out to vote for him, and I'm, I'm assuming that they will as an alternative to Trump. But again, this is a Trump scenario, and I think if he's to win Nevada, he'll have to get a boost from a decrease in turnout for young voters in cities like Reno. So that's his pathway in terms of the geographic stuff. It's just kind of holding up this trend in Las Vegas, really doing well in the city itself, and then hoping maybe you have trends with Hispanic voters in the rest of the state, and then maybe a decrease in youth turnout in uh, Reno. But exit polls are an even better way to look at the electorate. So um, obviously, there's not actually a whole lot of change here. And because, again, Hillary Clinton won Nevada by the same amount as Joe Biden. They both won by 2.4%. But if you look at white voters, for example, we'll start there. Clinton won them by 16, or Clinton lost them by 16. Biden lost them by 13. So Biden improved, but with Hispanic voters, it was different. Biden um, lost, his, or he won Hispanic voters by 26. Clinton won Hispanic voters by 41. So um, the Hispanic trend was pretty sub- uh, pretty substantial for Democrats, and I would definitely make the argument that white voters can improve for Trump, especially if it's working class or rural voters. So there's room there, but I'd say the Hispanic trend is the most encouraging thing for Donald Trump. Obviously, um, you have a lot of Hispanic voters in Las Vegas that don't have college degrees that are working class. I think that's an area where Trump can improve. Um, like I said, the youth vote didn't really change too much. I don't think Biden won him by 30. Uh, in, in 2016, Hillary Clinton won the youth vote by 29, so not too much change there, but I'd say both Clinton and Biden were pretty poor candidates for the youth vote in general. Um, wealthy voters, I've talked a lot about these in previous videos, it's kind of a microcosm of how the suburbs vote. Trump in 2020 uh, won wealthy voters by 12%, as you can see, he got 55% of the vote there. And then if we go to income, uh, voters made over 100K, Clinton actually did significantly worse than Joe Biden, although some of that's because they have different ranges here, and I'd, I'd imagine these are a bit more Democratic um, but regardless, tr- uh, Biden probably did better than Clinton with uh, the wealthy vote, but he didn't do nearly as well as he did in other swing states. So that's an area where I think Trump can improve. Maybe he gains a little bit of ground back with the wealthy voters. But um, that's what I would say for Nevada. It's it's a really weird state. It's kind of small, which makes it um, difficult to analyze to a certain extent. It's it's really interesting, and, and I would definitely say that 
it's an important state, but it's really, really difficult to tell. And that's why if you watch my channel last year, I did old, I, I got it right. I had Cortez Mosta winning by the slimmest of March. I had her up by half a point on election day. I'm glad I made that call because I was right. But if you watch my channel, I went back and forth on her. I, I had Laxalt winning Eve as late as October. So um, it's hard to say to analyze, but I'd say right now, closest state there is. If I had to guess, I'd say maybe Trump takes Nevada just because he's doing so well in Clark County. But we're going to have to wait and see as we always do. So thanks for watching. Again, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll see you all in the next one.